where are we today? I can't hear you. Come to the Ulster Fulton Park. Look at the buildings that have been salvaged from. So there's a. We've just arrived at the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum. It's like a historical... A history park. A history park. So this is the first vlog I've done in a while. So I'm going to take you around with me and show you some of the bits and pieces. So enjoy. It's a lovely day outside today <clears throat> so I decided to come out to the greenhouse and work on my first wire which I haven't done for a while. I spent last night doing knitting admin um, as I had quite a lot of projects that I had to go back and have a look at shall we say and reassess or fix or do something different to or figure, figure something out with so I had to take some time and do that last night. So I did that. So I'm back working on my first sweater and I'm sure it will be done in a few evenings because I just have to lengthen both sleeves and knit the cuffs and then um, cast off the cuffs and yep. Now it's finished then I have to block it. So the greenhouse is in the beginning of getting overhauled for the spring. Um, I have seeds to sew and things to do in here and a lot of cleaning and tidying to be done. I um, forgot to say as well, this yarn that I'm using to knit the first sweater has sold out back last year. It's Hebridean and Black Welsh Mountain. Hello. I just did some job in here. Okay. And, um, but I'm going to be um having a limited edition yarn come out at the end of March which is quite similar to this and could be definitely used um in this pattern and it's this warblers and blue textile base so it's a little bit lighter in color than this this is quite dark and <clears throat> it's also four ply wool and spun the pattern the yarn in the pattern for this is actually um, DK weight so um, but I had to do some serious gauge stuff because my gauge was so far off I had to go down to I had to go down did I go down whole needle size 
Yeah, I went down a whole needle size and I went from a DK to a four ply to a chief gauge. Um, and actually this is knitted in my Hebride, or in my new base. This is the Swart Blues and Blue Texel, so you can see the difference in colour here. It's a lot lighter. So, and I held it double for the beret. This is the Stock and Pip beret by Albina McLaughlin. And, um, yeah, this sweater is going to be the perfect wee, I think, for spring and early summer. I have a lot, a lot of knitting plans for this year. I feel really creatively inspired at the moment and I have a lot of ideas coming into my head. <clears throat> so I'm just trying to write them all down so I can kind of go back to them later and refer to them. Um, so that's quite nice. Maybe it's because of the season just coming into springs making me feel more creative and inspired that way. So I'm going to finish this. Then I need to reassess my um the Ella Gordon pattern I was doing. What's it called again? Oh, the something yoke. Oh, I've totally forgotten what it's called now. But <clears throat> gonna reassess that and remeasure myself and see if I'm the same size as when I started that um because I think I started that pre like when I was still breastfeeding so I think my chest circumference may have changed so I'd like to reassess that and figure out how I want it to fit and I might need to rip it out and cast it on again and then I'm knitting my daughter a little self-drafted um lace sweater so we'll see how that goes um so far i have knitted a gauge swatch i have um taken a measurement of her head i have vaguely used uh, elizabeth zimmerman's percentage system for figuring out how many stitches to cast on for the um deciding to do it elizabeth zimmer when the eps system thing um you can it's i think it's supposed to be from the bottom up um yoke or raglan but or not yoke or drop shoulder but i'm doing a top down raglan and um i want slightly bigger sleeves than normal so there was a bit of figuring out to do with that but i'll chat you through that another time and then I would also like to cast her on a bonnet. Um, there's a couple of bonnets I was looking at, um, so I'm not sure which one I'll pick. I'll maybe do two. And then what else do I want to knit garment-wise for myself? Um, I would like to maybe knit a garment in my new base again, even though I know I've already knitted the beret in it. Um, I would maybe like to do some sort of jacket or something. I think it might hold it double again to make like a DK weight and um, not sure there's quite a few things in my queue so be really cool to do some monochromatic colour work I think um, that could work really well or um, yeah I'm just not sure I think some sort of jacket type thing would be nice potentially um, and other projects that I had to investigate last night. I think that's everything. I had to go back, when I brought this out of the bag, I had to go back, figure out, I had to rip back first of all, then I had to figure out what row I was on, because Fisherman's Rib, if you're knitting it in the round, um, <clears throat> you have to figure out what row you're on. Also had to figure out what needle size because I totally forgot what needle size I was doing. Then um then I had to just start knitting it. Now that I've started it's really easy. Um so that all in all that took took quite a while. Um but now that I'm going it's gonna be really fast I think and it's so actually really enjoyable to knit on. I haven't picked it up in so long, but it's 
don't you love like going back to like something that you've like almost finished like it took me a while I don't know whenever I make a mistake I have to leave it for a while before I can go back to it but then if I go back to something I've almost finished and I can just finish it off kind of quickly like it feels really satisfying because you haven't been knitting on it very long and suddenly you've got like a whole new object that's been languishing for a while so that's so nice and it feels like I'm almost like spring cleaning my my whips in a way so I've got quite a few to spring clean things for my wardrobe for next year that I would like to add oh I'd like to knit my daughter as well like a little scarf possibly some mittens although I might buy those just because I don't know they might fit better possibly I don't know um want them to be more like flexible so she can actually use them when she's outside um yeah I need to see what I'd like to knit for myself I still have a Harriet's headband at, at the back of my mind to do some leftovers I'm also currently as well as a self-drafted sweater I'm doing for my daughter I'm all I'm knitting another one called the garter stitch jumper light I think it's called it's by a designer called I think Kat and Lenny and I'm just knitting it in some leftovers that I had in my wool pantry um yeah so I had a good clear out of all my works in progress and hopefully um that'll make a little bit more creative space for what's to come next in my knitting and uh yeah I'll have to start thinking about what like garments that I would like for this winter and and um, just um, think about them for a little while. I like to stew on things before I do them often. Occasionally there's some things like this hat that I just cast on so quickly and knit it so quickly and it was just the right thing for me to do in that moment. But usually I like to stew on things a little while and figure out what's annoying me about my wardrobe that I need another one of or like what do I have too much of, that sort of thing. So I've managed to talk here for almost 10 minutes so I'm going to switch this off now before this vlog gets super long and I think I've already said in this video um, when we were at uh, Culture All the Ulster Folk, Folk and um, Transport Museum my phone ran out of battery so early on so I didn't really get to take you around that but I hope you enjoyed the wee tiny bit of footage that there was. So I think there's going to be a lot of gardening coming up in the podcast or sorry the vlogs in the next few months there's so much to do in here I need a day just to clear the whole thing and to make it good before um, before everything starts growing before I sow seeds and everything so hope you enjoyed that little chat and hopefully there'll be a bit more b-roll here for you and I'll catch you next time so I actually spent this morning spring cleaning again spring cleaning is becoming um, a theme in this vlog spring cleaning my um, packing room which I'll show you now and I did a bit of cleaning spring cleaning in the greenhouse which I'm going to show you as well then I'll show you what I'm working on and then we'll um, end the vlog there so here's a little tour of my new and improved packing room so I sorted all this out we have a situation with the sewing box that will have to <laughs> be kept for another day. And I have my um, my yarn samples, my labels and a bit of free space here and scrap paper, free box. And yeah, so I'm quite pleased with how this is all looking now. This is the blue textile warbles that's coming next month. so. I have it all boxed up. Most of this, the this is Hearth DK. This is some um, new mini skin sets coming next month. More swirls and blue texel. This is in the shop. This is Hearth DK mini skin set sock sets. Hearth DK Causeway and natural sock and my limited edition used wool. So that is the situation at the moment, and this is stuff for next month. 
So now we are inside the greenhouse. I put out these, but I need to get more compost. This is not enough. And I have these seeds. So what am I going to sow? I think it might be too late for the chilli. I'm going to do the fennel in this bed over here. And maybe this one too. I have these tomato seeds. I got these free with the Gardener's World magazine, which I got as a Christmas present. So I get it every month. And I've ordered a few different, two more different types of tomato seeds and some artichoke seeds, which I want to put an artichoke in here and in here. And maybe some in the, there's Rufus going crazy. Some in some of the other beds, some of the borders. So it's looking a bit tidier in here. So I gave this a bit of a tidy up there on Sunday. So these are all my spare pots. Um, my Arrakesh's compost for my blueberry plant, which I need to sort out. So I'd say we're looking pretty tidy in here. Um, our main aim for this spring summer is to get the compost bays going properly and um, to make, we have one bay, but we need two really. And we need to figure out how to properly use them. So I know you have to have layers of cardboard and grass and different types of matter in there to make it compost properly so my aim is to research that and um, i think there's actually a bit in one of my magazines about it and um, so i need to research that figure that out and then build it um, and then get my seeds going i hear it's good to put them in the hot press but i'm assuming you'll have to get them out there pretty quickly and unless because in case they go straggly so you don't want that um, so that's the greenhouse shirt. Now I'm going to show you what I'm making. Hopefully you can see me. This is not a great angle. I'm sort of crouching down here just to show you my project that I'm working on. This is the Garter Stitch Light Jumper by Kat and Lenny. It's the designer. This is for my little girl. And um, I ran out of... Um, I was using up scraps from other projects and the the main body is Hello Stella Cormo in Shag Rug colorway and along Abic Anna Silk Mohair in Shateen colorway. And this is a skein that I just had in my stash. It was a sample that I got to try dyeing um, and I decided not to use it in the end. So um, it's a four ply weight. I ran out of room in my phone there, classic. So it's just saying about this base was a sample and I held it double to create like a DK, sport to DK weight. So what I'm gonna do is do the neck band also in this color. I'm going to do the sleeves in this color and I'm gonna do the cuffs in the orange. I have a little bit of the orange left, so um, I'll probably just hold it singly. I This is all the more wire I have left, so. Um, but I don't want to order another one, so because I'm trying to use up my stash a little bit and my scraps. So this will do her, um, coming into the spring and then next autumn, winter, it will still fit her, I think. So it's going to be a kind of colour block type situation here. And it's just garter stitch, so it's really pleasant to work on. I will say though, I had to size down to a size 3 needle on the body and a size 2 millimetre needle on the uh, waistband because I'm such a loose knitter, so that's really weird. Actually, this is 2.25, not quite 2 millimetres, but yeah, <coughs> um, it works really nicely. So that's what I'm working on right now. And just before you go, I actually got some quite interesting posts from um, a lady, a local lady who um, cranks sock tubes. So I'm really, really pleased that I managed to find someone. She sent me a sample to try, so I'll just grab it here. She actually sent me two um, samples to try um, of different yarns on different cylinders that she has for her sock machine. I th think it's an antique sock machine. So <coughs> I am going to try putting in an afterthought heel, which I haven't done before, and 
toes and cuffs. So I have a lot of research and learning to do about this before I begin. And she has recommended me a tutorial um, that works really well. So I'm going to look into that. So I'll have to fit this into my knitting time in the next few weeks. And it's going to be really interesting, I think. So that is my current works in progress, apart from the self-drafted pattern. But you'll have to wait until next time to see that because I haven't really started. I've only done a few rows, so I don't know if it's going to work out yet. So I hope you enjoyed that little vlog and the little chat and all the spring cleaning. And um, yeah, catch you next time.